Hey everybody, I'm Alejandro Perez, the CGI Nerd, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to change attributes of objects after you're copying them. In the past we used to use the copy stamp node, and we've done that a lot. And now instead of the copy stamp node, we're going to use a method with the for loop because the copy stamp node does not exist anymore. So how do we do that? Got to create a geometry node. And then let's create a grid. And we'll create boxes. We'll add a color to the box. And then let's decrease the size of the box. We'll scatter points onto the grid. Okay. And then how big are the boxes now? That should be okay. So before we would use the copy step node and we don't have that, but like the closest we have would be the copy to points right now. So the geometry to copy and then the points to copy to. So we could see that we have a whole bunch of cubes onto the point so there. So we can go into the color and change the color, but it changes it on everything. Before what we would do, there was another tab here in the copy node that would say stamp. And we would adjust the stamp values to be able to randomize the color or any other attribute. So now what we're going to need to do is create a for loop. And we're going to do a specifically a for each point. So it creates this loop here. We're going to connect that into the points. So the points come into the loop and then come out. So we can see the points here and whatever happens in here is going to be looped over and over. So a good way to see that is to show a single path. And if we scrub through here, we might see the point change. Let's make it so that we can see the number. So it was here, 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 and so forth. So that's basically the path number. And we need to be able to get access to that. We can't do it based off of the point number now, because if you look each time we jump to a new point, it only has that point in the scene and it's always going to be zero. So, because we're doing one point at a time rather than doing all of the points at the same time, we can't use the PT num we used to to be able to kind of change things. So we need to find a way to get a single number that is unique for each one of them. What do we want to do inside of this loop? We want to copy our cube to those points. So I'm going to turn off the point number and we can see if we switch over the single pass, it shows us that it's creating them on each point. And if we turn it off, we could see that we're basically getting the same thing as what we had before, except that it's going through the process of doing each point individually. So how do we start randomizing our color over here? Well, we can go in here and we have the create meta import node that gives us access to some variables here what we need is the iteration that's going to give us an iteration number so each time we are going through it's basically equivalent to the single path so you go here and it has a number and it has it's associated to this then we go to the next one then it's associated with this so these numbers are going to be unique and it's going to be based off of the iteration number. Now let's turn the single pass off again. What do we do with that? So over here, let's do detail. We're going to write a short expression. The string, the first string that we're going to need is the for each metadata node that we're accessing then we want to get the iteration number so we put that as a string too 
And then the last number we don't need to worry about. We'll just set it to zero. Okay, so you can see that it starts off like with that zero point, then it goes a little bit more. And there should be a few that are kind of like dimmer, but it's going well past the range of zero and one right now. But let's say we add a random function and put that whole detail because that gave us the number already. So we can randomize that now. And we can see that we have different intensity of red for each one of them. So let's just apply that same expression into the next channel and then we'll basically seed it. So inside of the random function, we're going to add a number to the detail. So let's try like 55. You can see that it's added green into everything. And here, let's do 20. It could be any number, really. And that gives us a complete range of randomness for each point. So the reason I added these seed numbers, just so that you could see if we remove them from each one of these, we're going to have a grayscale value, which might be something that you want but because they are randomizing exactly in the same way, the intensity is going to be the same for each object. So we're going to get a kind of range that is just grayscale. All right. I hope that helps with a method to not need to do the copy step node now because it doesn't exist. So we're going to be using the for each point loop. And then I get access to the iteration number through the detail expression. And then we just added a randomness to it to be able to give us a random value for each color channel for each individual cube. But you guys can expand on this to create a ton of stuff. I just wanted to put this out because we had a ton of copy stamp tutorials that people have questions with. And now I can point you guys to this video on how to get a element to change based off of the point number. All right. Bye. Have a good one.